Often when we talk about tensile strength, usually the last area that we would think about that term would be in fitness and exercise science. But let me tell you why we should be familiar with that, especially when we're talking about isometrics. Let's first cover what tensile strength is. Tensile strength in biological tissues, particularly muscles and tendons, refers to their ability to withstand a pulling force without breaking. In simpler terms, it is the maximum stress that these tissues can endure while being stretched. This concept is essential for understanding the mechanics of how forces are transmitted through the body during physical activities. Tendons, which connect muscles to bones, play a pivotal role in force transmission. Their primary structural protein, collagen, forms a highly organized matrix that gives tendons their high tensile strength, allowing them to resist the immense forces generated by muscular contractions during both dynamic and isometric exercises. The tensile strength of tendons largely depends on the alignment and cross-linking of collagen fibers. Collagen fibers and tendons are arranged in parallel bundles, which allows them to effectively bear and distribute tensile loads. The cross-linking between these collagen fibers adds further strength and stability, which is really important for tendons to handle the repetitive and high-stress forces associated with both everyday activities and high-intensity sports. Tendons have a hierarchical structure with collagen molecules forming fibrils, which then bundle into fibers, fascicles, and ultimately the entire tendon. This hierarchical organization contributes to the tendon's ability to stretch slightly under tension and then return to its original shape, a property known as viscoelasticity. This viscoelastic nature of tendons allows them to absorb and release energy, which is vital during activities that require explosive movements. Isometric exercises involve muscle contractions where the muscle length does not change, and there is no visible joint movement. These exercises significantly impact the tensile strength of tendons because they require the muscles to generate force without shortening or lengthening. During an isometric hold, the tendon is subjected to constant tension, which stimulates collagen synthesis and remodeling, enhancing the tendon's tensile properties. For example, isometric exercises like holding a plank or a wall sit engage various muscle groups while placing sustained tension on the tendons, promoting adaptations that increase their ability to handle stress. The specificity of isometric training also allows for targeted strengthening of tendons at particular joint angles, which can be highly beneficial for improving performance performance and reducing injury risk. For instance, performing isometric exercises at angles where the tendons are most likely to be loaded in dynamic movements, like the bottom position of a squat for the patellar tendon, can enhance the tendon's ability to withstand tensile forces during these movements. This specificity is crucial for athletes who need to enhance the tensile strength of tendons in positions that mimic their sport-specific actions. Power production is the ability to generate force rapidly and is a key factor factor in many athletic endeavors. The relationship between tensile strength and power production lies in the tendon's ability to transmit force efficiently from muscle to bone. Tendons with high tensile strength are more effective at transferring the force generated by the muscles to the skeleton, enabling more powerful and explosive movements. This is particularly important in plyometric exercises where the rapid stretching and contracting of muscles and tendons generate a powerful force. In terms of the force velocity relationship that we often talk about in this channel, Channel, tendons with higher tensile strength and stiffness can store and release elastic energy more effectively. When a tendon stretches under a load, it stores potential energy, much like a stretched rubber band. Upon release, this stored energy contributes to the force output, enhancing power production. For example, during a vertical jump, the Achilles tendon stretches as the calf muscles contract eccentrically, storing elastic energy. This stored energy is then released during the concentric phase, contributing to the explosive power of the jump. If the tendons are weak or have low tensile strength, they might not store and release energy as effectively, reducing power output and increasing the risk of injury due to inefficiency force transfer. The tensile strength of tendons is not uniform across all joint angles. It varies depending on the mechanical loading conditions and the angle of muscle tendon unit engagement. This is due to the changes in muscle length tendon stretch and the amount of force that needs to be transmitted through the tendons. At specific joint angles, muscles can generate maximal force, 
which corresponds to optimal tensile loading of the tendons. For instance, the patellar tendon, which connects the quadriceps to the tibia, demonstrates the greatest tensile strength when the knee is approximately at 90 degrees. This angle aligns with the point where the quadriceps are most capable of generating force, allowing for maximal loading of the patellar tendon. Similarly, the Achilles tendon, which connects the calf muscle to the heel bone, exhibits maximal tensile strength when the ankle is at a neutral 90 degree angle. At this position, the gastrocnemius and soleus muscles are in an optimal position to generate force, and the tendon's collagen fibers are optimally aligned to handle the tensile load. The tensile strength at this angle is crucial for activities like running and jumping where the Achilles tendon must repeatedly store and release large amounts of elastic energy. Moreover, the tensile strength of tendons at specific joint angles is influenced by training and adaptation. Regular loading of tendons through strength training and isometric exercises at various joint angles can enhance the tendon's tensile strength across those angles. This is due to the process of mechanotransduction, where mechanical loading stimulates cellular responses that lead to the synthesis of new collagen and the realignment of existing fibers to better re resist tensile forces. Over time, this leads to an increase in tendon stiffness and tensile strength, reducing the risk of injury and improving performance in activity that require high force output. Tensile strength is a really critical aspect of muscle and tendon function, influencing how effectively forces are transmitted across joints during physical activity. By understanding the role of tensile strength, particularly in relation to isometric exercises and power production, we can design these crazy training programs that enhance not just muscular strength, but also the resilience and efficiency of our tendons. Training at specific joint angles to optimize tendons tensile strength can improve performance and reduce the risk of injury, providing a well-rounded approach to strength and power development. Now, we just mentioned training at specific joint angles, and if you're familiar with the old isometric myth of we can only get strong at one angle, then you'd probably like our video on debunking the eight most common isometric myths where we cover the angle specificity myth and seven others. If you'd like to see that video, here's a link right here and we'll see you there.